In this video, we'll solve equations with variables on both sides. So to see what I mean, if you'll look at these two example equations, there are variables on both the left and the right side of the equation. So what do we do in these situations? Well, first, you want to check and on each side, see if you need to distribute anything first or combine any like terms. After you've done that, then we can use our inverse operations to start rearranging the equation. So you're first going to collect your variables on one side of the equation, and then you'll collect your constants on the other side. It doesn't actually matter which side you put each of those, and we're going to look at both in our examples. Okay, and then you'll solve, you'll isolate the variable again by using your inverse operations. So remember what you do to one side, do to the other to make sure you keep everything equal and balanced. So let's look at some examples. Take a look at 8x minus 7 equals 4x plus 21. We need to decide if we want to collect our variables on the left and the right, or the right. Since 8x is larger than 4x, I want to take my variables to the left. That's just my preference to choose the side where the coefficient is greater. So to use the inverse operation means if that's a positive 4x, I will remove it by subtracting 4x. I do it to the right, I've got to also do it to the left. So it will cancel from the right, and 8x minus 4x leaves me with 4x. Copy down the rest of our equation. Now we can undo the subtraction by adding 7 to both sides. So 4x equals 28. And the last step is to undo the multiplication, so divide both sides by 4, and x equals 7. So you can always check your solution by taking it and substituting it back in for the variable. So let's check this one to see if we're correct. I'm going to copy down the original equation, and every place I see an x, I'm going to put in 7. So as we work through, 8 times 7 is 56. 4 times 7 is 28. 56 minus 7 is 49, and 28 plus 21 is also 49. So since that's equal and true, we know we solved it correctly. So pause the video and try the example on the right. Here, when I'm deciding which side to collect my variables, I'm going to collect them on the right this time, since negative 2j is larger than negative 11j. So to cancel out a negative term, we need to add. I'm going to add 11j to both sides. This leaves me with 9 equals 9j plus 45. So let's isolate the variable. Let's undo the addition by subtracting 45 from both sides. 9 minus 45 is negative 36. And then lastly, we can undo the multiplication of 9 by dividing both sides by 9. So we get negative 4 equals j. Or if we write it with the variable first, j is equal to negative 4. So let's do a couple more. Here on the left, you'll notice that this equation involves an extra step because we have some like terms. We have negative 9n and positive 14n that are on the same side. So you want to combine those first. If I put them together, we have 5n. And now I'm ready to collect my variables on the same side. So I'm going to collect them on the right since 6n is larger than 5n. So I'm subtracting 5n from both sides, which cancels it here. And we have 9 equals 1n minus 12. Now to isolate n, I just need to add 12 to both sides. 9 plus 12 is 21. So we know for this, n is equal to 21. So pause it and try the next example. For this equation, we need to start by distributing the negative 2 to each term inside of these parentheses. So when we multiply, we get negative 10x minus 2 equals 58 plus 10x. I'm going to collect my variables on the right again since 10x is larger than negative 10x. So I'm going to add 10x to both sides so that it will cancel the variables from the left 
And now I have negative 2 equals 58 plus 20x. To isolate the x, now we can subtract 58 from both sides. So we will have on the left negative 60 equals 20x. The last step is to undo the multiplication by dividing both sides by 20. So we have negative 3 equals x, or x equals negative 3. A couple of special cases that I want to talk through and I'll show you on the next slide as well. There will be times when you're collecting your variables that they will actually cancel from both sides so that you are left with no variables at all. When that happens, if you are left with a statement that's true, so an example of that would be if you're left with something that says 3 equals 3. Because that is true, your solution is all real numbers, meaning any number for the variable would actually make the equation true. Now, if instead your variables cancel from both sides, but you're left with a statement that is false, so if it said 3 equals negative 3, which is false, then that means that there is actually no solution. There's no value for the variable that would make the equation true. So let's see what I mean. Look at the first equation on the left. We will start here by distributing the 7. That's going to give us 14c minus 7 equals 14c minus 7. So if I start collecting my variables, let's say I want to bring them to the left, I'm going to subtract 14c, and you'll quickly see that this does actually cancel the variables from both sides. If I write down what I'm left with, I have negative 7 equals negative 7. Because that is a true statement, we would say that the answer here is all real numbers. And you can go back to the equation and see that actually anything, any value you choose to plug in for this variable will work and will make the equation true. Now let's look at the one on the right. We need to start here by distributing the positive 2 to each of these terms. So we have 13 plus 6f minus 12 equals 6f minus 5. Now let's combine our like terms because on the left I have 13 minus 12. So we will combine that. So we'll say we have 6f and 13 minus 12 is just 1. So let's collect our variables. Let's take them again to the left. But we'll see again that when we subtract 6f, it cancels my variables from the left and the right. But now I have a statement that says 1 equals negative 5. This is false. So our answer here is that there is no solution. Because the variables canceled and this is false, there is no value that we could plug in for f to make that equation true. All right, a couple of word problems. We're going to translate this one and write our own equation. It says 2 more than, and I'm going to highlight any words that tell me what kind of operation to use. 2 more than 16 times a number is the same as 21 less than the product of negative 7 and the number. What is the number? So we are looking for this number that they're describing. If we can choose any variable. I'm going to choose n for number. Okay, now when I read the same, that's another word for equal. So I'm going to first look at everything over here. Let's just take it a piece at a time. It says 2 more than, which tells me I have addition, 16 times a number. Okay, so let's write out what we just read. We said 2 more than 16 times a number. So I'm going to write 16 in. Well, it says this is the same as 21 less than. So we're going to be subtracting something by 21 less than the product of negative 7 and the number and product tells us we have multiplication again so I have negative 7 in 21 less than that which means minus 21 so now we have our equation to solve I'm going to collect the variables first on the left so I will add 7 in to both sides so I have 2 plus 23n equals negative 21. So let's remove the 2. 
which gives us 23n equals negative 23. And the last step is to divide both sides by 23. So we get n is equal to negative 1. All right, so the last problem. Haley has $155 in savings, and her brother Hank has $230. Haley is saving, I'm going to highlight that word, she's saving $10 each week, and her brother is spending $15 each week. After how many weeks will their savings accounts have the same amount of money in them? Okay, so let's describe our variable or define it. I'm going to use W for weeks because we are looking for the number of weeks until their accounts have the same amount of money. And I'm going to then write out, we're talking about how many weeks until Haley, her account equals her brother's. To find out when they're equal to each other, let's write an expression to first represent Haley. So what do we know about Haley's account? Well, she has $155. So I'm going to write that value. And we know she is saving. So saving means she's adding to the account. And she's adding 10 each week. So I'm going to say that she is adding... 10 and each means we would multiply it by the number of weeks. Hank, on the other hand, has $230 and he's spending. So that instead of adding, he's subtracting $15 each week. So now we have our equation and we just need to solve. I'll collect the variables on the left since 10w is larger than negative 15w. So let's start by canceling negative 15w and adding 15w to both sides. So we get 155 plus 25w equals 230. We now need to subtract 155. So 25w equals, the difference here is 75. And lastly, let's undo the multiplication. So divide by 25. And W is 75 over 25, which is 3. And go back to the context. We were looking for how many weeks until they will have the same amount. So see, we would say after three weeks, Haley and Hank will have the same amount in their accounts. Awesome. So you have just solved equations with variables on both sides. I'm going to show two more slides that have five practice questions if you would like some extra practice. Um, but great work. Feel free to pause the screen if you want to work through these next problems.